I'm Kelly Kearney with Starry Constellation Magazine, and today I have a real Wizards with Wanderlust treat for fans. Harry Potter's Weasley twins, Fred and George, have left the halls of Hogwarts to embark on an adventure of a lifetime and their new, re their new reality series, Fantastic Friends. It premieres on July 18th on CW. Welcome, James and Oliver Phelps. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you very much. Hey, how Absolutely. are we doing? Good to see you, Kelly. Yeah, it's great talking to you guys. For the fans who are maybe not so familiar in the U.S. with what's going on with this show, um, you guys are going around the world. You're soaking up some mind-blowing sights in this travel show. And uh, you're taking some epic challenges with some of your famous friends. Oliver James, talk about how this new take on a travel show came about and where the idea came from. So the, the original idea kind of came around when um, I realized that James and I look obviously similar, but our tastes and everything, when we go traveling, um, are very different. Like I'm more than happy staying in a plush, swanky spa resort hotel, whereas James will just happily stay at the local backpackers as long as he can get on the mountain quick enough, you know? And it's <laughs> and we thought, okay, well, let's see if we can do something there because we enjoyed, as I say, we love to travel and we thought what a great concept of just being able to show the same location, but from different angles of what different people's appetites are. And then on top of that, we thought, well, we when we used to do the promotional tours with Potter, we would always take a guest along with us. And that just added to it. So I thought, well, why don't we invite a guest on the show as well? So that's we've got a different guest who we know who other other people, the viewers should know as well from um, in different locations where we are. And it just it just keeps the keeps the whole every episode new and every exciting episode exciting. And you spoke a lot about your travels on your podcast. So did that sort of formulate while you're doing the podcast, this idea? I guess so. I think that what, I mean, it was Oliver's, I can't take any of the credit. It was all Oliver's brainchild, but um, there you go. You get one, you get one compliment from yeah, me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, I think that we've, we've always enjoyed traveling anyway. And it just, we, we kind of talked about it actually about how there isn't really a show, which, which we've watched travel wise, which is, um, I guess, aimed at everybody. It's either like there's like a food thing or a history right. thing or something like that, which is great. But we wanted something that the whole family could watch. And so we so and also we also, like Oliver said, that we do different things when we travel. And so pretty much what happens is that there's all of myself and a guest and we'll all have a say in the activities that we do. But pretty much the rule is you have to do it. So even oh. if you're completely out of your and it, what normally transpires is that things that you never, ever would have dreamed of doing end up being the highlight of your trip. Yeah, I was watching, obviously, the premiere. You invited some of we talked about how you invited some of your famous friends in the premiere of season one. You invited Arya Stark, Game of Thrones, Maisie Williams to join you in the crystal waters of Belize. Um, fans can expect more familiar faces like that this season. Were your pals that you invited game to join these adventures right away? Because some of these challenges are a little challenging. I would think that maybe some people were like, mm, I don't know if I want to do some of these things. Yeah, kind of. I mean, Ma Maisie was in uh, was in St. Lucia with us. Um, oh, St. Lucia, on, that's on right. That's yeah, but but it was, um, yeah, as, as James said, the, the thing is you've got to do it. So if you could, but, and then you need to be game for doing everything, which is, is fun because I'm, you know, there's there's certain things I'm not happy with doing, like going to an underground cave to a glacier, like we did in Iceland, but it turned out to be absolutely incredible to do. And it's it's one of those things like we will support each other through any, you know, there'll be a bit of ribbing going on. They, don't get me wrong, but we'll be supporting each other to to go, do whatever they're going to do. Like in Austria, going down a bobsleigh run, which seemed like a really good idea before we got in the bobsleigh and then it was just <laughs> the scariest two and a half minutes or however long it was in my life but again it's experiences like that which you you look back on and think that was that was incredible and just just awesome to be able to see well james looking back on this experience what memory is going to stand out to you the most so far that was kind of like wow i'll never forget that there's been there have been so many and i can't just say this but it's from so in St. Lucia, the, the episode there, there was, it's possibly, it is literally a paradise island. I know everyone says that, but we were able to, 
go out and actually meet locals and do you know go and experience the waters and the jungles and the rainforests and and everything so seeing that like what a diverse little place that was that was incredible um to being in ireland with ivana and she always like her dad has always wanted to take us to a hurling match which is a, a gaelic sport and it just never transpired that we were in Ireland whilst the season was on. But it just so happened that we were there whilst we were filming when it was on. So we went to a game and they record, they they showed us doing that. Um, like Oliver says, skiing and snowboarding in Austria. Um, then in Poland, be with Sophie Skelton, who's from Allander. And what I can say is that Sophie is great at breaking stuff and blaming <laughs> us. I.e. <laughs> I, a four by four driving up the river. That was... <laughs> That was an interesting thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, there have been so many things and uh, my, I never really used to keep mementos, but I've literally got mementos of, of everything. So I've actually got a bit of, um, sorry, if I can get it here. So that's actually some volcanic ash oh. from when we were in Iceland with, with Bonnie Wright. And it, it gradually, it gradually, it goes from bright orange to very a dull one now, but just being thing there and, I'm sorry, I'm going on now, but I got, I got excited. Um, but the I think what was, without sounding really cheesy, what made it the best memories was actually being there with my brother and also with some really close friends of ours as well. Yeah, you know, let's talk about some of those challenges. You both seem like a little bit of thrill seekers. You both seem very excited to do some of these things. Um, but they were kind of risky. Was there ever an adventure that seemed like a great idea until you started filming and then you were like mm, mm, maybe not the best idea not loving this uh yeah there was a <laughs> there was one there was one when we were in in iceland and we went on a whale watching um boat which was was awesome and then one of the uh the shipmates said so who wants to climb up the the rope ladder and <laughs> naively was like yeah, yeah go on and then you as i said we're out in this fjord and obviously the, the waves are moving this thing and you this, the higher you get on this this rope ladder, which isn't, but as I mean, the name suggests it's going to be a bit wobbly. Um, and when, when I got about three quarters of the way up there, it was like, okay, this isn't uh, this isn't what I thought it would be now. But on the plus side of that, I got to I got halfway and noticed that there was like this nice little rock spar on the top. So once we cut off there, we went down and um, to cut a long story short, later that night we were sat and we were filming in this natural natural hot spring. And then completely unexpected, and it wasn't forecast or anything, but it was the first night of the year that the Northern Lights came out. Um, so it was just purely by doing that, the payoff was was something that I'd always wanted to see, and we were luckily in the right place. And it went on for hours, this this show. And uh, Oh, wow. What made it even more cool was the next day when we were speaking to some locals, they were all saying, did you see the lights last night? It wasn't like, oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Like They were genuinely chuffed to see them as well. Oh, I love that. You know, did the series give you an option to choose destinations? Did you guys have a say in that? Or was that all planned out by the powers that be beforehand? No, we definitely had a say in it, which was which was very handy. Um, but it was also a combination of, so when we shot for season one, um, so the country were just coming out of lockdown. So it was trying to work out what we could and couldn't do and things like that. But it, if anything, that made it even better because the, the, I guess the tourist guys they were and the local fixers they were even more keen to because I haven't had visitors there for a year or so, so they were really keen to show us things to do, and I think that that added to the experience. Oh yeah, and who like fans love to hear about outtakes. So I'm imagining you guys doing these challenges. You guys traveling everywhere. A lot of things did not make the show. A lot of things hit the cutting room floor. Was there something that you wish would have been included in the show, but there maybe just wasn't enough time or it was just too chaotic to include? Was there something that you I'd, really kind of regret not making the final cut? I reckon that all of our, out, the things that should have been outtakes made the show and all the times we got the task correct ended up on the cutting room floor. So. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Because we we were very we were very keen to, you know, we haven't really got egos at all. So we wanted to make it clear that we're more than happy to take the Mickey out of ourselves and kind of play up to it. And there's actually a a, a funny bit when we're in Dubai. We were playing night golf. So Oliver and I are big big golfers. So we somehow wangled golf into the show for a small segment. 
but I won't give it away. But I, I basically get my my just desserts for being a bit too cocky. <laughs> You know, together you both travel, filled with friends, dove, sometimes literally head first into these physical challenges that required a little brawn and a whole lot of bravery in some aspects. What has this experience meant to you both? And how has it changed you? Maybe as travelers, maybe as people, maybe as brothers. I think it's I think definitely in all in all all of those aspects, really. I mean, in terms of travelers. Um, I'm definitely someone who goes to the airport and happy in their own company to just get, just get through it, which my wife hates now if we ever go on vacation. She's like, well, you wait. Um, so we'll do that. And then there's, in terms of like, I suppose in terms of coming out of our shells a bit more, in terms of being up for doing stuff where maybe sometimes we'd say, oh, I'm not going to do that. Or So to me, it would be, oh, no, I'm not going to, I don't want to paraglide off the top of a high peak in Austria. James's one before we started would maybe be, oh, no, I don't want to go to some wine tasting lesson. You know, so there's two totally different things there, but we both learn to appreciate them and learn, learn to enjoy them. And I think, I think as brothers, I suppose it's really since we've, we've sat back and looked at what we've achieved, there's been a great, a great thing which um, has just added another layer of, of, of closeness between us, which, you know, we're, you, 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 sometimes lucky not uh, sometimes people don't get ever get that especially when they get into their, their 30s whereas you know we're we're probably closer now than we probably ever have been um and it's all been a large part of being in the experiences where we've been and seeing certain things and be that trekking through the desert in dubai while looking at the night sky and then trying not to step on some scorpion you know it'll, <laughs> it'll focus the mind quite a lot but you've got all these experiences and stuff that, that we just live by now and it's uh yeah very very lucky and we're we just hope people really enjoy watching it and they get some some ideas in their head of where they could go on their adventures yeah i feel i felt really uh inspired to check out some of these places especially with the screeners i watched i i was like oh i'd, I'd really love to do that maybe not some of the height challenges. I have a terrible fear of heights, but a lot of it was a lot of fun to watch. Was there any place, James, that you wanted to visit that you weren't able to, but maybe you will in new seasons, next season, the following? Sure. Well, yeah. So we've we've actually uh, already shot the second season. Yeah. Um, so so we were able to tick some things off. Soft. <laughs> start again. <laughs> tick 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 some things off whilst doing that. Um, but. To be honest, whilst we were filming, even if the cameras like because we've only got a certain amount of we've got 48 to 52 minutes for an episode. So that usually leaves about seven, eight minutes of um, screen time per activity that we're doing. Sorry, there's my EP head on. Um, but the, so if we did stuff, the sometimes like when we're in Austria, for example, um, we're doing skiing and bobsleighing and paragliding and local traditional uh, stuff where we're in Lederhusen's and things like that. <laughs> but I always really wanted to learn uh, snowboarding. So Haley, uh, Haley Joel Osmond and myself, we actually stayed out a couple of days later. And he and I, he can snowboard already. So I had lessons and then I ended up going off snowboarding with him. So just little things like that, which which really did help um, just make it even more of an amazing experience. Yeah, I I would never snowboarded before, but I, I guess you learned to do skill with the show. Yeah, I try to. Oh, I've got the hair for it, I guess. So that's that's my <laughs> that's my experience. <laughs> you do have the hair for it. I'd like to know what would you like to say to your fans who have followed you through the entire Harry Potter franchise? They're super excited about this show. What would you like to say to them? I think my my first always go to is just just a huge thank you so much for all the support because it's because of people like 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 uh, the guys who really enjoy what we do and support us. That's that's the reason why we made this show. It's the reason why the idea came of maybe we could sow some ideas into people's heads. Or on the flip side, there's people who we know who who are who you know support us a lot, but they can't do that type of stuff. So maybe we could show them a new idea, a new thing of, well, look, this, this is what also happens, you know, and, and bring them along the journey with us. That's our, our main thing. And as, as long as these guys really enjoy what we do, that just makes it even better for us to be able to do it. James, you have anything to say? Yeah, hundred percent. A big, a big thank you, obviously to, to always, because everyone's very supportive and I don't think that if you're not in the uh, like a the Potter fan, like my, a lot of my friends, they they enjoy Potter, but they're not necessarily Potter fans. But they're always blown away by how polite 
when people come over for a photograph or an autograph or just to say hey or whatever how polite everyone always is in that and that's what's that's what's been really great so we're really excited that to share this i know that it's, it's already gone down well don't blow my own trumpet it's, it's already gone down pretty well in europe and other countries um but the the us fan base really does hold a special place for us so we're really excited for for them to see it and like I like we was saying, we wanted to make a show which hasn't necessarily been done exactly like this before. So I hope they enjoy it and prove that when you go traveling, you don't have to go for the Insta -mo Instagram photo op. Like you can go and experience, have, have stretch your boundaries and, and you can have such an amazing time. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's the takeaway for the show. You know, come come out of your comfort zone a little bit and experience things outside of the Instagram vacation. That's brilliant. 